In this video, I will share with you the best side hustles for programmers. All of the activities on this list are low effort, low barrier to entry, and things that every single one of you can do regardless of your age or of your skill level. Now I say that confidently because I did these activities myself, especially when I was 14, 15, 16 years old, before I was making any kind of real money and I was in high school and just trying to make any kind of money I could. I would do these activities for $20, $30, $100, whatever it may be, and I would do all of them at the exact same time just to try to make as much money as I possibly could, even before I was considered, say, good at programming or kind of an expert in a specific field. So I know you can do these activities, listen through the video, I guarantee at least one of them will apply to you. And with that said, let's get into them. All right, so the first and probably easiest side hustle to get into is tutoring. Now, tutoring is something that is so great to do as a programmer because not only does it make you better because you have to explain your thought process and really understand a topic before you can articulate it well to someone that you're teaching, but it's something you can do at pretty much any level of skill. So you can do it when you're a complete beginner, you can do it when you're an intermediate, you can do it when you're an expert, and obviously you adjust your prices and your clients based on what skill level you have. Now, a lot of you may be saying, well, I can't tutor, I'm just a beginner programmer, blah, blah, blah. That's not true at all. No matter what level you're at in your programming journey, there's always gonna be someone who's kind of behind you and that could use a little bit of personal assistance and almost just encouragement uh, to kind of get through a project or an assignment. I'll tell you that in most tutoring sessions I've done, really my value is that I'm encouraging someone, I'm helping them, I'm asking them to repeat themselves, I'm kind of explaining something or breaking it down slower or more times than their teacher would have done. I'm giving them that personal assistance or that personal help that they wouldn't get in a classroom. And even if I'm not necessarily teaching them a specific topic, it really helps them to get through an assignment or get through a project or even just understand the topic on their own. So especially at a beginner level, that's really where you can provide a lot of value. And obviously, as you tutor more and more, you get better and better and you increase your prices based on who it is you're tutoring and what topics you're teaching. So to give you a very concrete and real example of how you can do this, if you're a student, especially if you're in high school or if you're in university, then what you can do is go to any professor that you have or any teacher that you have. Assuming you do okay in their class, then you can say, hey, you know, I'm looking to uh, be a tutor. Do you have any references for me? Is there any students that are struggling, for example, that maybe could use some help? In fact, when I was in high school, teachers would actually approach me because they know I did a bit of tutoring and they'd say, hey, I have this student. Do you mind, you know, doing an hour after school with them, etc." Back then, I would have charged $20 an hour. Maybe I would have done it three or four times per week. And if I could make 80 bucks a week, that would be a fantastic week. If I did two hour sessions, oh, that's great. I just made 40, 40 bucks for that session, right? And then as I got older and better, I charged $25 an hour, $30 an hour, $35 an hour. And I just continued tutoring all the way from probably when I was 16 up until I was about 19. And then I got to the point where I didn't really want to tutor anymore. But this is a really, really good side hustle. Anybody can do this. Again, it doesn't matter how good you are. You can always find someone who's a little bit behind you in the journey. And if you're teaching a more complex topic, you can charge a lot of money for tutoring. If you're an expert in some specific area of programming and there's not a lot of tutors for that, you can easily charge $100 an hour, $150 an hour. Someone having an hour long conversation with you and being able to pick your brain on so many different topics and learn pretty much everything you know about whatever they're asking is really valuable. And you'd be surprised how much people are willing to pay for that. So just wanted to throw that out there. Tutoring, great side hustle. I highly encourage you to do it. Not only does it make you a better communicator, but you can make some extra cash. And if you're really good and get to say a level like I'm at right now, you can easily be charging $250 an hour for a tutoring session. I know that seems insane, but trust me, it's happened. I've been paid that countless times to tutor people. So the next side hustle I have for you is consultant. Now, this is a really, really good side hustle because of how easy and lucrative it is. However, it is very challenging to get consulting clients, especially if you're not like a known presence, right? If you don't have some kind of social media, you don't have a website, you're not like an expert in a specific field. So for me, consulting has been really, really effective and a very easy way to make money because I have a massive online presence. I understand many of you don't have that, but I want to mention this because it's something to think about, especially as you get better in a field. A lot of people will be willing to pay you to access the knowledge that you have. And all you have to do is sit there and just answer the questions that they have for you. And that can be very, very valuable to a client, depending on what kind of project they're working on or why they're seeking your advice. 
So I'll just tell you, when I do a consulting session, depending on what I'm consulting on, I'll charge anywhere from $250 an hour to $500 an hour. Obviously, I'm not charging, you know, the 16 year old kid that kind of money if he wants me to do a tutoring session or something. But a company, someone who's well established, someone who's working on a big project, that's very reasonable to charge that kind of money. So what is consulting? Let me just kind of give you a quick brief here. Really, what consulting is, is someone paying you to access your knowledge. They want to know what you know. They want direction. They want to save time so that they don't have to go through the same research and struggle that you had to go through. You are just kind of giving them the answer or at least pointing them in the right direction to save them countless amount of time. Now, if you think about this from their perspective, is it worth $500, $1,000, even $5,000 for them to sit with you and you to save them 40 hours of research or 40 hours of studying or whatever it may be? In my opinion, absolutely. It's 100% worth that, especially depending on what their time is worth. So oftentimes people will consult with me and say, hey, I'm working on this project. What tech stack do you think I should use? What's going to be the simplest to get started with? Do you think this is the right approach? How would you solve this problem? What problems do you think I'm going to have if I go down this line? And sometimes these people are programmers. Sometimes these people have no programming experience at all, and they're looking to hire someone who can do this job. So they say, hey, who should I be looking for? Who's the right person? You know, what is my criteria for this job? I need this done. Who do I look for? What do I need? Or I want to do this myself. What's the fastest way for me to learn this technology? Those are the kind of consulting sessions I usually have. So anyways, very lucrative. You can make a lot of money consulting. I think it's a very, very good side hustle. I still do it today, even though I don't do a ton of consulting or a ton of tutoring stuff. Uh, but again, it is more difficult, but definitely something you want to think about if you're getting into that, you know, expert level status. If you're getting really good as, at a specific topic, people are always looking for domain experts or, you know, module experts or framework experts or language experts or whatever it may be. So the next best side hustle, in my opinion, is web development or redoing existing websites. Now today, most people do have websites, so it's probably going to be more taking a really old website or a website on an outdated platform, moving it over to another platform, you know, adding some nice animations, making it a bit smoother, fixing the mobile usability, whatever. It's usually taking an existing website, modifying it, making it look a little bit more modern and then getting paid to do that. Now, there's a lot of ways to gain clients in this space. And I will also mention that you don't have to be a programmer to do this. Most people that make websites nowadays are not programmers, right? They use Wix, they use Squarespace, right? They use WordPress, whatever the platform is. So if you know a bit of programming, that makes you so much more valuable because you can add custom touches to the website that other people might not be able to. You can do a really cool CSS animation. You can add some custom embedded code, right? You can go a little bit above and beyond, and that obviously adds value. But what you do here to gain clients is you either cold email, right? Maybe you put up a gig on Fiverr or Upwork, or you find a local business, a place that you can call, a place that you can drive to. And you say, hey, these are all the issues with your website. Let me fix them for you. Let me make you a new landing page. You know, I guarantee this is going to help drive some more clients. And all you need to do is get five people in the door, 10 people in the door, depending on what they're selling. And you're going to make back the $200 you charge or yeah, that I charge you charge for the website. You know what I'm saying? So it's very easy if you present it in that way. You say, hey, all you need is two people to come in here and buy a jacket or buy a shirt or whatever it is that you're selling. And you've just made back all of the money that you paid me to redo your website. Do you think that having a killer website is going to give you an extra five clients, right? Absolutely. It's very reasonable. And as long as you're not charging a massive amount of money and you're doing something, you know, relatively straightforward, then definitely worth it. So think about it. Hopefully this is giving you some cool ideas. I'm not saying this is easy to do. This does come down to sales, you know, how you actually convince someone to pay you to redo a website for them or to make a website for them. But if you can master that skill and you can get okay with being rejected by a lot of people, then you will definitely make a fair amount of money doing some basic web development. All right, so my next side hustle idea is freelancing but not just any freelancing, freelancing in an extremely specific niche. The only way to make money freelancing, unless you're really an expert and you've been doing this a really long time, is if you pick something extremely, extremely specific. You have to be one of the only people on the internet offering the service, otherwise you're just not gonna get clients. Now, the reason this is the case is that there's so many people around the world, especially people that are living in very low cost of living areas that can just undercut the crap out of you on prices when you're doing freelance. 
right? So if I were to offer a freelancing gig for 20 bucks, as soon as I put that gig up, there's gonna be a hundred people that are offering it for $5, right? And for them, $5 in their country is gonna to equate to about $20 here in terms of what they could buy. So obviously you're gonna pay the guy who can do it for five bucks if he can do the same level of job. So unless you're a really like an expert level person, like you're someone who's charging a ton of money, you're really good at what you do, you're one of the only people that can accomplish a task, then you can make a lot of money with general freelancing. Otherwise, if you're just starting out, you need to pick a specific topic. Now, I've made a video on this in the past where what I used to do when I was freelancing is I would just do Pi Game, right? I would just make games in Pi Game. Believe it or not, back then when I was doing that, it was really, really niche. And there was only, let's say, 10 other people, right, that were kind of doing the same thing that I was doing. And I looked at all their gigs. I had better examples. And I just kind of outmarketed them uh, in terms of what I would do for Pi Game. I also had my YouTube channel. It was way smaller back then. It was like a few thousand subscribers. But obviously, that helped me get a few clients. Now, though, there's like hundreds of thousands of people doing this because they watched my video and they copied my gig. Anyways, if you want to make money in freelancing, as I was saying, you got to pick a specific niche. So maybe you're the PyQT expert, right? Maybe you're really good at Kivi. Maybe you're really, really good at a specific Python library, right? Maybe you're an absolute expert when it comes to Excel automation, right? If you can be one of the best people in a specific field, you will 100% get clients and you can charge way more for what you're doing than if you're just like, I'm going to do a Python script for you or I'll do your homework or I'll finish your project. You have to be specific. So I can't tell you what to learn or what to do, but you just need to understand the strategy is as niche as possible. And then of course you need to market yourself, right? Maybe you have a website, maybe you have a portfolio, maybe you do a little bit of paid advertising if you wanted to do this more at scale. Up to you how you wanna to try to obtain clients, but I'm telling you, you have to do it niche. And if you do it niche, you can make money. When I was freelancing, I made a few thousand bucks probably. Uh, and just, you know, very kind of half-assed. I wasn't doing this very seriously. I would just kind of let my gig sit. And every once in a while I'd get a client, right? I'd make 50 bucks, I'd make a hundred bucks. And for me back then, that was fantastic money. All right, so another side hustle idea here is to sell a programming course or to teach people programming on mass. Now this could be in like a live class, right? Maybe you rent out a classroom in a university and you have, I don't wanna call it a seminar, but maybe like a lesson where you're teaching, you know, 20 people, you're doing some exam prep, something like that. That's something I've thought about doing in the past and that a lot of people have done successfully. You also could make a course, right? You could make a video course. Now, if you make a video course, this is hard to sell, especially if it's not a very niche or specific thing, or if you don't have millions of followers like I do on YouTube. The only reason I'm successful with my programming expert course, so programmingexpert.io, check it out, is because I have this mass following so I can actually advertise a more general programming course. However, if you're not someone who's known, if you have no presence, that's probably gonna be a little bit more difficult. So maybe you do something in person, maybe you're doing a group lesson, maybe you're doing a video course, but it's really, really expensive and really specific, and you only need to sell it to 10 people or 20 people to actually make money from it. All kinds of different strategies and different routes you can go down, but this can be the most lucrative depending on the course that you build, the price of the course, and the amount of people you sell it to. I'll tell you guys, my course makes me the most amount of money from anything that I've done, and again, that's because I have so many people that follow me and the course is really good value. It's very inexpensive and I can sell it to a ton of different people. Anyways, that was, uh, let's say idea number five. All right, so now that we've mentioned that, I'll leave you with one last bonus item here. Obviously, this is very hard to do, but this is to start your own company, make your own business, have your own app, your own service, your own website, whatever it is you can make with your coding skills. A lot of you know this is what I've now transitioned most of my time into. I'm working for a startup. It's called Velocity. I'm the co-founder of that company. I'm going to be talking more about that on this channel um, kind of in the future, giving you some startup vlogs and information about how that's going so you can kind of see that journey and that process. But this is obviously the most lucrative if this does well, but the highest risk because it's a lot of time and it could very likely fail, right? The company I'm working for has a very high probability of failure. However, if it does well, it's going to do extremely well. So it's really up to your risk tolerance and how much time you have. But you could definitely work on some kind of side project, some kind of side business, you know, spend an hour or two every day kind of putting in some time on it. And at the end of the day, even if it doesn't succeed, you have a great resume project that you can put, well, on your resume, show off to recruiters, and hopefully that would help you get a high paying job if that's what you're gunning for. So with that said, I think I'm going to wrap up the video here. Hopefully you guys got some value from this. I know that you can all do at least one of the things on this list. You can all make a bit of money on the side. I promise you it is possible. You just have to go out there and start and try. 
With that said, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in another YouTube video.